And the next step is to bring in some footage. I have two 4K cameras. I've got a Panasonic GH4, which is a lovely SLR 4K camera. And I've got a Blackmagic 4K production camera. They film into very different formats. The GH4 will film in MP4 files and also in MOV files or QuickTime files. Edius will take either of those. It doesn't have a problem with either of them. However, I had a problem with the GH4 footage in other programs if I film in MP4 format, particularly Avid and DaVinci Resolve. They don't really like it. They're quite happy if you film in MOV format, but they're not happy if you film in MP4. So I tend to set my MP4 to film in MOVs all the time. So all the footage I'm bringing in is going to be in MOV files. When I'm filming on the Blackmagic camera, it can either film into ProRes MOV files or it can film into fancy DNG files. Now, Edius won't take in the DNGs, but it will take in the MOV files. There are obviously other cameras. Sony in particular have been bringing out a lot of XAVC cameras, and Edius deals very well with XAVC and XAVC-S footage. Edius' slogan is Edit Anything. Now, obviously, it's not entirely true. There'll be occasionally things that don't work, but generally, it will edit pretty much anything. So anyway, I just want to bring some stuff in. It's very simple. I'm going to go to the hard drive, grab hold of the folder, and then just drag it and drop it into the project window. And there you are, a whole bunch of footage. And then really all you've got to do is do exactly what you do in a normal project. Take the footage, sticking in the player, play it, mark an in point, mark an out point, put it on the timeline. And then build up and edit that way. In editing, no real difference with 4K footage as opposed to HD. You notice I've got my bin here set to this humongous icon size. This is a, a very new feature inside of Edia 7.5. Previously, we just had these other settings where you've got icons, smaller icons, tiles, and so on. But they've added in this new one of extra large, which just gives you a nice, great big icon in the project window. So anyway, I've got some stuff on the timeline. Edit it into it just like any other footage. Now, how well it's going to work will depend on your computer. My computer has got in it what's called a 4790K processor. It's a desktop Haswell processor, and as you can see, it's running at 4 gigahertz. Now, there are other better desktop processors. There's what's called the Haswell E processors, and then there's the Dual Xeon systems. And of course, they will work better with this, but as you will see, this one actually works pretty well with EDIUS for 4K footage. Now, the reason why I'm not using these other better processors is because I am actually editing on a laptop. Specifically, I am editing on this laptop, which is a new laptop which has come out this year, and it takes desktop processors, so it makes it the fastest laptop that we have. Now, as it uses a desktop processor, it uses quite a lot of power, so the battery life on this laptop is about an hour if you're going to use it on batteries. It's much better if you use it on mains. But it is actually amazing that you've got a desktop processor in a laptop and you can edit 4K on it. It does depend on what program you're using with it. I'm using Edius, which is very good at 4K. If you were using Avid, it wouldn't be nearly as good. So anyway, let's get on with some editing. Let's take some stuff, bung it on the timeline, and everything will play back nicely, as long as your computer is powerful enough. Now you notice there, I'm actually playing back one clip with another on top of it. Bring up the task manager so you can see how much processing power it's actually using. And you can see here it's using 100% processing power and it's not quite managing that picture-in-picture -picture effect. If you look at the ADS buffer, and yeah, it's not quite managing to play it back. It's having no problem playing back state cuts. The buffer there is staying normal. And then when you get to the picture-in-picture, -picture, the buffer starts dropping because it can't keep up. So yeah, for basic editing of 4K, this kind of processor and this kind of laptop is actually quite capable of editing at 4K with this kind of footage. What it'll struggle with is effects, and that's why you might want a better processor. So when we're looking at a desktop system, we're generally recommending that people either get a Haswell E processor, which is a bit faster. This processor in this laptop is a quad-core processor. The Hadwells are a six-core or eight-core processors, and they also have more advanced motherboards and faster RAM. So they're generally better computers, but they cost a little bit more money. Or you'll go for a dual Xeon. Now with a Xeon, you'll be paying for two processors and all the gubbins to keep that going, so they'll be considerably more expensive than either of the single processor systems, but they'll have more power, so they'll be better at editing 4K. 
On the other hand, if I was to throw on some things like a bit of colour correction onto a single layer and you know put a bit of colour correction, put a bit of a YUV curve on there, fiddle with it, tart up the colour a bit, give it a bit more punch, and play that back. And you can see Eddie is there is actually quite happily coping that. It can cope with effects with several effects on it. It just struggles doing two clips at once. So that's when you're going to need more processing power. That's why if you buy a desktop, you're probably going to go for a more powerful processor. Of course, you can't do that on a laptop because this is the best laptop we've got at the moment. Can I do anything to improve the performance? Well, not an awful lot. I mean, you might notice as I'm playing this stuff back, the EDIUS buffer down there is getting 64 frames, which is just over two seconds worth of buffer. If I could give it a bit more memory, then maybe it can cope with a bit more effects. So I can come into the system settings and then play back. And I'm going to up the buffer size. So it is at 2 gig, I'm going to put it up to 4 gig. And I'm using more of my memory there to help buffer the playback, which means it'll get through more effects. I'll give it a bit of a run up. You can see the buffer there is now 129 frames. And I can get through more of this section with effects without having to render it. But you can only do that if you put more memory into the system. Now my laptop is actually only running with 16 gig of RAM, but you can actually put it up to 32. 32 gig of RAM would generally be better for 4K editing, but it does actually work with 16. But generally I just say to myself, no, if I'm using a laptop with this kind of thing, I can do cuts, I can do colour correction, I can do various effects, grading, slow motion. If I start to do picture-in-picture picture effects, then I'll have to do a bit of rendering. I can put titles on. Let's put me a new title in there. And there we are, up pops. A title quite happily playing back over the top of the video, which has got the colour correction on it. It's just the picture-in-picture picture effect that it actually struggles with. And that's all down to the processor. I'm actually doing this project at 25p because obviously my footage is filmed at 25p. If you go up to 50p, it does get harder. So this laptop will really struggle with 50p footage because obviously you've got twice as many frames a second. There are quite a few cameras coming out now which do 50p and for 50p really you are gonna probably have to look at a desktop to get the best out of it. Now I actually been editing 4K footage now for quite some time. I've had both the Blackmagic and the GH4. I've been using GH4 footage all the way through this if I use the footage that comes off the Blackmagic camera, which is in Apple's ProRes format, the playback isn't actually as good. It's actually harder to play back ProRes footage than it is to play back GH4 H.264 footage. GH4 footage is in H.264, which is heavily compressed. The ProRes is a lot less compressed, but it doesn't play back nearly as well. You'd think it would be easier. It's actually harder. That's actually the same with every program that we've got. ProRes just basically doesn't play back as some other footage. Now if you find you've got 4K footage that doesn't actually play back very well, you can convert it into something else. Just bring them into EDIUS, put them in the bin, right click and choose convert. I'm going to choose a batch convert because I'm doing several clips. And then I'm going to choose online HQX quality. And what that does is it takes all of the clips in whatever format they are, keeps the size the same and converts them to Canopus's HQX format. And then you'll find they work an awful lot better. Ideally, you'd have a better processor. On the laptop, I can't do it. On the desktop, I could do it and I could go for a Haswell E or even a Xeon system.